Hello friends, it is Julie. Welcome back to Pages and Pens. Today I have a vlog style video for you. Let's jump right into it. First of all, you are on books. I have rearranged my room to the point where my tripod is so far away from me it doesn't make sense to actually film on that. So you're just on top of boxes right now. You're on top of an unplugged and a box that I have to send to unplugged with all of my tarot cards and things for the exclusive book covers. So, you know, there's that. After the comments on my YA fantasy try chapters vlogs to try to figure out what was staying on my shelves and what was going, I have a ton of book of the month thrillers and one that came from Unplugged. And I need to just make a decision about whether or not they're staying because I did get the horror box from Unplugged and I'm really excited about those books but I have a feeling that you know I need to kind of cull the herd if I'm going to like if these aren't staying. Five book of the month books and one from Unplugged. I'm gonna go over them. I'm gonna let you know a little bit about what they're about. I'll probably tell you when I got them. October 2021 so it's been a full year that I've had Everything We Didn't Say by Nicole Bart. I don't know the premise of really any of these. I like to go into my thrillers kind of not knowing very much. Her neighbors were brutally murdered and I think it's her younger brother who's the prime suspect and then she's forced back into town to help a friend but really she's there to mend her relationship with her teenage daughter, a source of her deepest regret and saw the infamous Murphy murders. I, do I love like parent mom stories? Not really. This sounds intriguing, so I want to give that a try. I also have The Collective by Allison Galen. No Killer Goes Unpunished. And this one was from November 2021, so just a month after the other one. This one I think is about a group of women. Five-year-old daughter's death, obsessed with a privileged white man, a uh, young man, I assume white, who she believes is responsible. Her rash actions draw the attention of a secret group of women, The Collective, uh, where I guess they try to find justice and she struggled, struggles to comprehend what her role is in, in the whole thing. She gets deeply enmeshed in the group and, you know, they're exacting revenge that the court systems can't get. Melts the driving narrative of then she was gone with the breathtaking twists of the chain. I read the chain. I had issues. I mean, it wasn't bad. I had issues with the believability of some of it. And then I have A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham, December 2021. So we've got October, November, December. Six teenage girls went missing in her small Louisiana town. By the end of the summer, her own father had confessed to the crimes and was put away for life, leaving Chloe and the rest of her family to grapple with the truth and try to move forward with dealing with the aftermath. 20 years later, Chloe is a psychologist in Baton Rouge getting ready for her wedding when she finally has a fragile grasp on happiness when a local teenage girl goes missing and then another that terrifying summer comes crashing back. Is she paranoid seeing parallels from her past that aren't actually there or for the second time in her life is Chloe about to unmask a killer? Sounds freaking amazing. They all do which is why I got them but I need to just figure out if there's something that I'm interested in or not. Um, and again I'll probably do the first two chapters. It'll be like try two chapters right? and then we'll see how we go. Then I have The Girl in the Mirror. This one is twin sisters identical on the outside, dangerously different on the inside, the front says, and this is about like one of them dies. Cynical and insecure, Iris has long been envious of Summer's seemingly never-ending good fortune, including her perfect husband, Adam, called to Thailand to help her sister sail the family yacht. Oh man. Iris nurtures her own secret hopes for what might happen on the journey, but she unexpectedly finds herself alone in the middle of the Indian Ocean and everything changes. When she makes it to land, Iris allows herself to be swept up by Adam, who assumes that she is Summer. Iris recklessly goes along with his mistake. Not only does she finally have the golden life she's always envied, with her sister gone, she's one step closer to the $100 million inheritance left by her manipulative father. All Iris has to do is be the first of his six remaining children to produce an heir. Oh, I hate that. I hate rich people stories. They're not relatable. However, comma, it sounds interesting. From October 2020. This one is new. This one's from October 2022. So like literally this month. This is Catherine Stedman's, oh, this was Rose Carlisle, by the way. And then Catherine Stedman's uh, The Family Game. Listen carefully, do your research, trust no one, run for your life. Harriet Reed is a novelist on the brink of literary stardom and is newly engaged to the heir of a powerful family. When Edward's father, Robert, hands Harriet a tape of a book that he's been working on, she's eager to listen. When she presses play, it's clear that this isn't just a novel, it's a confession. A confession of a grisly crime, a murder, and suddenly the game is in motion. 
Feeling isolated and confused, Harriet must work out if this this is part of the plan to test her loyalty or something far darker. What is it that Robert sees in her? Why give her the power to destroy everything? This might be a game to, Her to the Holbeck family, but for Harriet, losing might prove deadly. I could be here for it, obviously, hence why I got it. So those are all books that I picked because I liked the premise. This is one that came from Unplugged, The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. While in college in New York, Shay and her best friends met a captivating man who seduced them with a web of lies and the w about the way the world works, bringing them under his thrall. By, su by senior year, Shay and her friend Laurel were the only ones who managed to escape. Eight years later, Shay's built a new life in a tiny Texas suburb. But when she hears the horrifying news of Laurel's death, delivered of all ways by her favorite true crime podcast crusader, she begins to suspect that part of her past she thought was buried is still very much alive and that the predator is more dangerous than ever. Recruiting the help of the podcast host, Shay goes back to the place that she vowed never to return to in search of answers. As she follows the threads of her fat friend's life, she's pulled into a dark, seductive world where wealth, privilege, shield, brutal philosophies that feel all too familiar. When Shay's obsession with uncovering the truth becomes so consuming that she can no longer separate her desire for justice from darker desires newly reawakened, she must confront the depths of her own complicity and conditioning. But in a world built for men to rule it, both inside the cult and outside of it, is justice even possible? And if so, how far will she go to get it? It sounds amazing. Frankly, they all sound amazing. So again, I will do the first two chapters or up to like 30 pages of each of these and then report back. Within the first couple chapters of a thriller, you kind of get a feel for the author's writing style, for whether or not it's going to grip you like right off the bat. Like the way a thriller starts is kind of important. Like it's, it's a big thing that you kind of grip them. I want to see how their chapters end. Do they kind of leave you hanging so that you have to turn that next page? That's the kind of thriller that I want and I want it to be really compelling from the get-go. So I am going to go ahead and give each of these a try. I will also talk about their ratings. I'll start with the oldest one first which is October 2020, The Girl in the Mirror. This is sitting at a 3.80 on 4,312 reviews and 30,903 rating. Very high for a thriller. Um, thrillers tend to be pretty polarizing. You either love it or you hate it. You like the tropes and the way the author writes it or you just, it doesn't work for you. So I feel like there's very few in between thriller ratings. It's either something you love or you just don't like it. We've got a five star, a three star setting. It was a little bit melodramatic. I saw the plot twist coming. Uh, a five star, freaking love this book. What a sinister, twisted, spine tingling, edge of your seat suspense this was. I ate it up. Um, had me guessing till the very last sentence. Do I care about white women yachting through France? Nope. I don't. Or a $100 million? Did it say $100 million inheritance? Yeah, $100 million inheritance. That's not a life that I can, you know, understand. So I'm going to have very little compassion for these characters. But sometimes with a thriller, that's okay. I have finished the first two chapters and also the prologue for The Girl in the Mirror. Not sure about this one, to be completely honest. Summer and Iris, and we're getting Iris's POV. So now I don't know if that changes later, but they are mirror twins. So they are identical twins. However, comma, they have like slight differences. So like one's left cheek is fuller, the other one's right cheek is fuller. One has like all of her organs have actually shifted over to the right. She's not doing great like financially, emotionally, relationship wise. And the father has died and left the $100 million to the first one that gets married and produces an heir. Right now she just got called to go to Thailand and pick up the boat because their visa's out or expired and the boat has to be out of Thailand before they might find out and try to seize the yacht. And they can't leave yet because the girl's so summer stepson has an inflamed infected penis. But it is immediately creepy. Like she's wearing her sister's things. She says like basically when she looks in the mirror, because it's a, a mirror image, she sees her sister. When she looks in the mirror, she doesn't see herself. She sees her sister. There's a vibe happening. Am I intrigued? Yes. Do I care even a little bit about these people's money issues? Absolutely not. I mean, the writing's not bad. Book one down. I'm going to keep it, but I'm probably not going to jump into it like anytime soon. This one is up next. And let me take a look and see what we have in terms of ratings for this one. This is sitting at a 3.75 on 18,000, no, 19,807 ratings. So a little bit lower on less ratings than The Girl in the Mirror. So the first three that show up on my um, 
the review pages are a five star, three star, three star. It's so not as strong uh, starting off as the girl in the mirror, but we will give it a try, see what we think. The murders took place on a hot summer night, but to Juniper, it would always be winter in Jericho. Bitter and unforgiving as deep February when frost edged the windows like salt on the rim of a glass. I don't know that I need pretty prose in my in my thrillers. It worked for Daisy Darker, but honestly, Alice Feeney can do no wrong. I got to chapter three of everything we didn't say. So I have a current day chapter and a past chapter to learn about the characters and what's going on and start to unravel the mystery. So we have our main character, Juniper, who is going back to the town that she used to live in. Her brother, Jonathan, is there. I believe he was pinned or suspected of a murder of their elderly neighbors. In this, we see her going back to the town and she's working at a library and also trying to figure out who is running this online podcast talking about the murders. She's trying to stop it before the podcast goes live. And this person's on a forum basically saying, like, I think I figured out who did it. I think it was this girl's brother. Um, I've got it all but proved. I just need to like edit the videos or edit the podcast and get it live. That current day chapter as well as a past chapter. The past chapter is a little disjointed. I'm not a hundred percent sure what's going on there. Current day chapters are an adult POV and the past is like teenage just newly graduated high school POV and so it's a little bit more like hurried and not as like you know sophisticatedly written. written. However, comma, I'm still interested. So this is going to stay. So next is the collective. The collective I am a lot more skeptical of, mainly because it's mothers and parents, and I don't usually jive with that. The collective by Allison Galen uh, has 3.94 on 23,747 ratings, which is not bad at all. Gabby rated it four stars. Misty rated it three. Girl with a pink ski mask rated it four. Badass mom seeking revenge for their children has major good for her energy. Pretty unexpected plot twist. Some drag, some parts dragged out more than others. Not necessarily a new all-time favorite, but had fun reading, Gabby said. It's my third thriller out of six. We're gonna see. Maybe the writing will wow me. Who knows? Maybe I was biased before I went in, but I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not keeping this. Here's the thing, right now I'm reading Bear Town, a uh, very similar premise, you know, boy, I, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened when her daughter was killed. They were probably still a minor, but they weren't like 10 and like an adult, you know, took them or killed them. It was like a peer thing, probably like uh, somebody she was dating or something. It's an adult woman obsessed with this young boy who took her daughter from her. And then also with the famous actor who got her heart when she donated the organs. And I don't care. The collective is going directly onto a pile of books for my sister, who is coming up on... Uh, some maternity leave <laughs> in a little while and want some books to read. So New York, socialites, drunk, bereft, grief-stricken mother, celebrity that feels like he owes her his time, attention, and love because he's alive because of her daughter. I genuinely don't care. A Flicker in the Dark it is. Uh, this one I got in December of 2021. Six teenage girls went missing. By the end of the summer, her own father confessed to the crimes. Now this... I might be able to get down with. So I will give Flicker in the Dark a shot. Um, so, so far, The Girl in the Mirror, Everything We Didn't Say stays. The Collective is going. And I don't feel bad about it. I'm reading Flicker in the Dark, chapter four, page 20. Um, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to read this for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, we're following <laughs> the doctor well, we're following the daughter of a man convicted of disappearing six girls. We don't know what happened to them yet. She's now turned into a psychologist. Psychiatrist? Not sure which. Regardless, she helps troubled teens. I already see a red herring. I, don't, I would hope it's a red herring. Know that in this book, the killings continue. So maybe it wasn't her father that did it. And if it's not, we already have a red herring as to who it could be. I'm really hoping it's not what I think. Because if I already figured it out, I'm going to be bummed. I'm going to be bummed, intrigued, I'm enjoying it, and I'm definitely going to continue. Another good one. I picked a winner when I picked that book of the month. We'll try this one next. Um, a disturbing thriller that left me gasping for air. Hi, kitty. 
I've got all of my swag in this thing. This one does have content warnings for suicide, rape, physical violence, sexual violence, trauma, self-harm, misogyny, gender es essentialism, and drug use. Anything with a cult, I'm usually a fan of. So let's see what the ratings are for this. This is a newer release, so I don't know if there's a ton. We are looking at 10,195 ratings and a 3.84. Again, not a bad rating at all. Uh, a couple people that I know have read it. Four star, great mystery thriller, big fan of the narrative structure, mixed between prose and podcast transcripts. Ooh, I love a multimedia feel. It's chunky. She's like, she means business. But so far, like, wins. Like, I'm not upset about any of these. I'm back with an update on my thriller try chapters. This is my cat's video for cats in the background. She's staring fixedly at a fall squirrel. The Last Housewife. I'm on page 12. I already know I want to keep it, so I'm not going to read all the way through. I'm dealing with COVID brain. Uh, it finally caught me. I avoided it this entire time. And despite being vaccinated and boosted and having the bivariant, uh, bivalent, whatever, the variant booster, I still got it. And I'm not having a great time. So it's very hard for me to focus, but I didn't want to let this drag on. So I liked this enough. Here's the one problem is that I'm probably one of like the only middle-aged white women that doesn't do true crime podcasts. This is very true crime podcast heavy and it's just like not my jam. Specifically because I would rather read something like horror and supernatural when things can like actually happen and like getting into the like mindset of like truly sick and demented people. Not a fan. Am I a psychology major? Also yes. Um, degree in psychology, hate kind of looking into the depths of how evil people are. I like the writing and I'm intrigued so I'm going to continue with it which means I have one book left for this vlog and that is Catherine Stedman's The Family Game. This house, look at that house. So I'm gonna give this one a try and see where we get to and then that's gonna wrap this one up but so far the only one that I'm not keeping is The Collective which is good. I feel like I should be in like a spookier reading mood but I'm so dead set on finishing the Beartown duology before the third one comes to me. I didn't have to get too, too far into the family game to know that I am 100% down for it. The prologue itself is gorgeously written and so captivating that I know I'm going to be here for it. Also, the main character is an author. Um, I love that. The same thing stands for The Last Housewife. Our main character is also a writer uh, writing novels and I love books about writers, especially women. Female main characters in all of these. They're also all female authors, which again, I love for me. I tend to prefer female authors for thrillers, especially domestic or psychological thrillers. I don't know why, I just tend to prefer them. So. Uh, the only one that's not book of the month is The Last Housewives. This came to me, Last Housewife, this one came to me through Unplugged. I'm definitely interested. <clears throat> definitely interested. Um, this one is giving me like adult these fleeting shadows, get out. Like it's, it's gonna be intense. But I'm here for it. There was, what was, there was um, a movie recently where somebody got like engaged and then went to meet the family at this castle and then they like hunted her. It's giving me those vibes. I don't know what that was because I don't watch movies, but definitely into it. So this one again is following somebody who's doing a podcast. So like The Last Housewife, this one is a podcast about killers <clears throat> or unsolved cases and one of them happens to involve her brother and some neighbors so she goes back to town here for that interested in it this one is a i covet my twin sister's life and then something happens to my twin sister mysteriously and i just move on with her husband as if i was her the premise is very creepy but i like it my only hesitation about that one as i get further into it is that it is very rich people problems stuff and i don't like that in my books however the forward to this is really beautiful about how we always think of these monsters as these like grotesque hideous um you know fictional things and then it turns out that you know it's somebody you love somebody you care for somebody you know too true too often right the ones hurting women are usually people we know the only thing that i decided to get rid of was the collection the collective the collective the, the, yeah the collective so that's it that's that's my thriller vlog 
Did I create a whole bunch of room on my shelves? Absolutely not. No, I didn't. I got rid of one book. And I'm sure the next book of the month rolls around, I will just fill that spot right back up again. I do feel better about just at least double checking that these are things I'm still actively interested in, so that I'm not keeping things that I don't want to actually get to. Like I'm, I'm really excited to get to these now. So if you don't mind seeing vlogs where I'm just in my pajamas, feeling sick as crap, go ahead and give me a big thumbs up, click subscribe, uh, click the notification bell so you know when I put out new videos, and I'll see all of you in the next one. That's gonna be it for right now. Bye friends.